To help curb the rise in violent crime in Brooklyn Park, city leaders are calling on an outside group to help bring the peace. Delane Cleveland has more on this new approach. I'm at the corner of 63rd and Zane, which has been the site of numerous shootings so far this summer. Starting Monday, a group called Minnesota Acts Now will help Brooklyn Park Police patrol the streets in hotspots like this. There will be community leaders who will all be working together to create a safe environment for our children and uh, the residents of Brooklyn Park. The group from Minnesota Acts Now will target areas associated with violence and loitering. The Huntington Place Apartments is one of the city hotspots where the nonprofit hopes to make a difference. Smith says members of the team will earn $20 an hour. All of our people will be unarmed. We're trusting the community that in turn they will welcome us with open arms. Bishop Harding Smith says that Minnesota Acts Now will be helping Brooklyn Park Police through December 31st. In Brooklyn Park, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. A Golden Valley Relief Agency is responding to a growing crisis in Haiti. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit the island earlier this month. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us what the Headwaters Relief Organization is doing to help. The situation in Haiti is dire. So far, more than 2,200 people have died in the earthquake, and over 12,000 people are hurt and hundreds are missing. It's been terrible, especially where the epicenter of the earthquake was in this uh, country, which has been damaged already so much before previous natural disasters. It's still recovering from the 2010 earthquake. Headwaters Relief Organization would typically send a convoy of volunteers to assist after a global disaster, but the agency had to change how they operate in Haiti. Because of the situation, the COVID and the travels and uh, the political unrest there, we, we, uh, we were not able to respond immediately to the earthquake. The Global Relief Agency is partnering with other nonprofits who are already in Haiti to get food, medicine and other supplies to people. And we are collecting, uh, organizing fundraising campaigns here locally in Minnesota. Through that, we are going to support the organizations that are really actually performing there. Headwaters does have a small staff in Haiti who are operating a school and orphanage. We have structural damage in the building, but uh, none of the kids or the staff member were injured in the earthquake. And our staff members were helping with the cleaning and uh, with the, the injured people uh, uh, just after the days of the earthquake. The goal is to bring hope and resiliency to Haiti. It's uh, an opportunity for us to show our generosity and help contribute to the people who have always been uh, impoverished. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, CCX News. People accustomed to catching the State Fair Express bus in Brooklyn Park will have to look for another method of transportation to this year's Great Minnesota Get Together. Metro Transit announced that they're scaling back State Fair Express bus service from 10 sites to three this year due to a shortage of bus drivers. The park and ride lot at 63rd Avenue and Botano Boulevard is one of the sites that didn't make the cut. As an alternative, Metro Transit is directing people to park and ride lots in Minnetonka, Bloomington and Cottage Grove. The State Fair Express buses in those locations will operate every 30 minutes starting Thursday. Right now as I stand here, we're about 66 operators short of where we'd like to be. We just can't provide the same level of service that we'd like to. In 2019, Metro Transit provided more than 545,000 rides to the State Fair. For more details on the locations of park and ride lots, check out our website. So how many of you adopted a dog during the pandemic? If you were one of them, you are definitely not alone. As Corey Bork reports in Business Matters, a pet adoption spike led to grooming growth. There's definitely the demand and people, people want good groomers. On Main Street in Maple Grove, yes, Nigel is ready for a bath, though he's not too happy about it. He's not the biggest fan of that, to yeah. be honest. Nicole Carlson brought her beloved corgi to Bubbly Paws. Grooming is very important, and um, specifically with corgis who shed a lot, they, you know, need that bath time. And it's way less messy coming here. It's a place where you can clean your pet or have someone do it for you. I am working on Tinsley. He's a golden doodle mix. Alma Cardenas has been grooming pets for seven years. It is so re rewarding when you um, get to see the transformation on a dog. Um, they come in needing your help, um, and then they leave looking flawless. She's one of the reasons dog grooming services have become so popular. I feel like everybody got a dog during the pandemic. I mean, 
Even our neighbors, you know, they've all got dogs. Bubbly Paws owner Keith Miller says the pandemic also had something to do with it. We're one of the small businesses that can actually say, hey, we grew from the pandemic. Miller says business at his Maple Grove store was up yeah. 15 to 20 percent last year. Dogs, I feel like, are now COVID proof. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm knocking on wood. Grooming services account for about three quarters of the sales but the self-service dog wash and other items are also popular. And these right here are the most popular doggy treats. They look like real cookies and people can eat them too. For Nicole Carlson, getting Nigel clean every couple of weeks is a must. <laughs> Nigel is just glad he's done until next time. For Business Matters, Corey Bork, CCX News. Parents have likely already noticed that as students head back to school this fall, they might have a tougher time finding school supplies. The nonprofit PRISM in Golden Valley gives away backpacks filled with basic school supplies to as many as 400 kids who are pre-registered. This year, the nonprofit still needs 10 to 25 backpacks to meet the need. We know that families need really high quality backpacks and that's what we really tried to provide. Um, one of the things that we found this year is that because of the school supply shortages, the high quality backpacks in that kind of $20 to $30 price point are really, really tricky to find. The nonprofit says people have been donating money so they can purchase the backpacks. If you'd like to help, check out PRISM's website. I'm John Jacobson with sports. The high school football season kicks off late next week for local teams. Here's Jay Wilcox with a preview of the Armstrong Falcons. There's an excitement level for Armstrong football and for a return to a traditional start of practice. I was telling my mom, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait till two days started. It was just, it was so fun to get back out here, get back out here to run, get the pads on, hit today, so it feels good, it feels good. I mean, it's great, you know, we get back out here, you know, have a, a normal practice, you know, we don't have to do the if, ands, or buts about coming, you know, calling off practice. And we really don't got to worry about it being cold anymore. It's pretty, you know, pretty warm. You know, guys are ready to come back out, work hard. An inexperienced Falcons team did well in the shortened 2020 season, going 4-2. and two. They don't have a very big senior class this season, but it's quality over quantity. Yeah, not a senior heavy team, but, you know, we played a lot of young kids last year, right? So our, our juniors, I think... Uh, Fortunately for us, right, have some experience. So we have some kids back this year with some experience, as much as uh, as much as that was last year, right, in a shortened schedule. And that just means next year they're still going to be good. You got a bunch of juniors stepping up in the big roles, and this year we're going to be even better because we got seniors, great seniors, Division One seniors that can really make an impact on the field. Safety Jordan McClome will be one of the area's best defensive players, with guys like linebacker Drew Kempel also ready to shine. Offensively, center Mitchell McDyer anchors the line, and junior Jamin Malone returns as the starter at quarterback. He'll throw to a talented receiver group that includes Peyton Newburn, Eustace McGowan, and Caden College. We got a great receiving core coming out. Our defense is looking great with Jordan McClone back there leading our defense, and you know it's just all up to us if we really want to do it, and we're going to do it. Armstrong moves into Section 5, 5A for the playoffs this fall, joining teams like Cooper and St. Louis Park. Looks like this Armstrong team has a chance to be pretty good by season's end. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. The Falcons open the season Friday, September 3rd, when they host Waconia. A new head coach will lead the Hopkins football team this season. Jason Malillo has a preview of the Royals. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Trevor Tolley is the new head football coach for Hopkins High School. It's one of those things that, you know, you can't really find the words to describe it because every every time you show up, it's just exciting. Tolley was an assistant coach at Stillwater and North St. Paul High Schools and most recently at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. This will be Tolley's first head coaching job. The transition has gone really smoothly. I think we've really gotten out. Uh, we practice hard and, and we're coming out every day and we're giving these coaches our all. We just need to keep the energy up and uh, we're getting more, more people every day and that's exciting to see. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for the season. As usual, the Royals will have a lot of athletes this season. The trick for Tali and his assistants is teaching the kids how to use that athleticism to win football games. Our football IQs is, is going up. Um, 
just from being able to uh, talk about what they knew before we came in um, and just having guys on staff with all this experience, uh, being able to, to instill their knowledge into these young guys. Hopkins will have to build a new offensive line. Senior guard Connor Besky is the only returning starter. Calling the signals will probably be junior Gabe Otmar. Seniors Lee Hutton and Jackson Drock are talented D-backs who will also see time at receiver. And senior linebacker Aaron Awney should be a force on defense and get offensive reps as well. Most of the Royals will play both ways. I would say it's a challenge, but I'm definitely up to the task. We can plug and play guys because we take the time uh, every day to study both sides of the ball. So we have um, almost all of our guys on defense have an offensive position that they understand. The mood at Hopkins is optimistic and upbeat, and that's all Coach Tolley can ask for right now. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. The Royal season opener is Thursday, September 2nd, when they play host to Prior Lake. That's all for sports. Thanks for watching CCX. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.